One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, and to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Obviously, David captured something that he beheld, that he saw. He experienced through tasting and seeing. I love that there are no limits to being able to experience. God, I just thank you for experiencing and tasting things of heaven that opens our eyes to see things that we've never seen before. To see the things that David saw that so captured his heart in such a way that there were songs that were sung about David singing great accolades to his accomplishments of slaying Goliath. But I can't find one song that David wrote or sung. Not about being the king of the greatest nation of taking a nation from being one that takes out all of its enemies in a lifetime, regardless of what ite it was, Philistine, we saw them fall. And David's not singing about the battles necessarily with that or even the giant or ruling as a king. But do, we do see him singing about the beauty, something that captured his attention more than all these other things. And here he is writing as well, for a day in thy court, Psalms 84.10, is better than a thousand. He goes on to say, I'd rather be a doorkeeper and the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wickedness. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God. There is so much that's incredible. I mean, we can see in Israel's day in the wilderness, that Moses would be there with God and Joshua would be there as well. And others stood at the door of their tents and watched in amazement, but it said that Moses drew near and worshiped. We see Joshua doing the same thing. It's not enough just to stand in amazement and just to behold the beauty. David knew if being a doorkeeper, if I get inside, I know there's so many more dimensions. If I just walk through the gate, the doorway, there are so many more dimensions we've experienced as we've sat in services that go well beyond the realm of the natural. David says, if I could just be a doorkeeper, I'd rather spend one day there than a thousand others elsewhere. And this was the king who had the best. And he knew the power of humility, of being at a place of access to the presence of God. 
It so captured his heart that we know that he danced in such a way that his wife wasn't too happy. That he would dance for miles and in celebration because of the presence of God. Now, David was singing, penning this song. Maybe he wrote this that they actually sang it in the courts. And maybe he was also writing of a man that he knew and had seen. For as David wanted to bring the Ark of the Covenant back to the rightful place, the enemy made the mistake of thinking they had won when they had captured the Ark of the Covenant. Oh my gosh. It doesn't take long for us to be on our feet and cheering in the excitement of the amazing, uh, the power of our God in reference to Dagon. They brought the Ark of the Covenant to the temple of Dagon only to find their God falling to the ground time and time again. And as they began to realize what was going on, they decided to move the cart and they went to different, a couple different cities. <laughs> they had an outbreak of some pretty major issues as a result of it. And then it came into a, a place that it stayed for a quite extensive period of time. And Abinadab says they wanted to move it even though they didn't do their research on the best way of moving it. And one of the sons trying to study the ark touched a place that was untouchable, stood in a place that he wasn't supposed to be standing. And as David began to realize that they were doing some things that weren't right, he, he positioned the ark at a home of a gentleman by the name of Obed-Edom. And, you know, to be Obed, to be him, after what they have just seen happen to, to Uzzah, I mean, that takes some, that takes some uh, boldness. It takes, that takes a lot to know that he just died for study in the ark, and now I'm going to keep it here in, in my house. Needless to say, he probably had a rule for his children. Don't touch the ark. And after just a short three months, it doesn't take long for word to spread of the blessings of God that rested at Obed-Edom's home. And David does his research and goes and takes the Ark of the Covenant back to the city of David where it belonged. Now it's at this place the Obed is faced with a decision. God, I thank you for visiting me. Lord, your blessings are so amazing. I tasted and I saw and I beheld your beauty firsthand in my home. There's even references to where he actually built a home for the ark in his home. You know, when we've tasted, we can't be satisfied with just a visit, can we? I know, I'm talking to the Sunday night people. Well, we're not just really satisfied and we're thankful, and, and Obed-Edom could have been just thankful for, for that time that he had with God. He had enough blessings to retire for the rest of his life. He would never have to work another day in his life. He could have moved to the side of a well of a watering pool in the oasis of the desert and retired and lived the rest of his life a happy man over the blessings of God. Except, he said, better is one day in the courts of his presence than a thousand else. I would rather be a 
doorkeeper and dwell in tents of wickedness. And I'm not saying that this was his, but I can't help but look at the similarities that David might have been looking at his life that produced this song. Oh, but Edom actually, after it, the ark was removed from his farm, from his home, from his place, and taken to the city of David, that he was not satisfied, and he moved with the presence of God. How incredible is that? That shows somebody who has been touched so much and knows the importance of the presence of God. As we have sang, God, we're lover of your presence here tonight. He loved his presence so much that he wasn't satisfied with the blessings that the presence brought him in that three-month period of time that got all the way to the king of the country of, of the reports of his blessings. That he could have stayed, but he went to the city of David and he said, you know, matter of fact, he was a, he was a, a I'm not going to pronounce it correctly, but he was a Gishite. And I, not even that he was in the Levitical priesthood and the ability to be where he was, except for the fact that he housed this for three months and maybe it gave him a little bit of clout or at least an entrance. And it shows him later on, it's in Chronicles, First Chronicles. Chapter 15, verses 16 through 21, that he was actually a singer that was listed. Because as we know, David produced teams of worshipers and teams of people that would praise around the clock. And we find his name listed. He says, I can't stay just hearing my blessings. I want to come. And if I can just sing praises unto his name. When you go on later in that chapter in verse 24, he's listed as a doorkeeper. Are you listening to me tonight? Here he is, Obed-Edom, a doorkeeper. He ended up becoming a doorkeeper, and he keeps going from promotion to promotion. He was in the overseership of the storehouse. And in 1 Chronicles, the next, in chapter 16, it names him as one that ministered before the ark. One that could not be satisfied. And when he tasted of seen, he beheld the beauty of his holiness. As David saw, as we read from his psalms and the prayers of his heart, as Paul, we talked about this morning, forever changed his life because he saw in such a way it caused him to be blind. And he was forever changed. This one thing that I do that I might know him. Paul, don't you know him? You don't understand that I may know him. The power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his sufferings. David, haven't you had enough? The key of David and listed in Revelations and the beauty of such a way, he'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than anything else. And we find that Obed-Edom was forever changed and could never be satisfied with anything but being close to his presence. How amazing it is for you and I that, that we get to experience his presence in such a way in our homes. But isn't there something about coming together and the corporate anointing and this atmosphere where things that are happening at this altar at different dimensions that are just so incredible. I know I'm preaching to the choir, but I think I have some doorkeepers in the house tonight. Doorkeepers of access to his presence. And we say tonight, God, thank you for apprehending us. Thank you for what we've tasted and seen. It's captured our attention and our heart. And we say thank you. And like Obed Edom, God, that we would never get so content that we stay in the place of your presence. 
In Jesus' name, amen. What, 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 you guys slacking tonight? I, you know, I uh, thank you tonight for helping me out. Did, did uh, Pastor Dave have an Enoch moment? I got to tell you, I did appreciate the plane. That was awesome. It was incredible. No one has to. Are you glad you came to the house of God tonight? To behold the beauty. To taste and see. To stir our hearts. To love his presence. And as we go this week, let your presence be at that place of in our home. That today that we are carriers of your presence. That we're not to be distracted by the main thing, the one thing that Paul the Apostle, David, Obed Edom, was captured by the one thing, your presence. And just for the sake, it would be weird if I didn't, and Moses too. (laughs) Captured by your presence, oh God. As we prepare our seed tonight, Lord, we sow with your presence in this atmosphere. That we would not just read Psalms 84. That we'd just not agree with it. but that our home be captured by your presence. Our home be a place. Our hearts and our eyes captured by your presence. And we thank you for the opportunity and the blessings of giving said, if I could just be a doorkeeper, and by the end of it, he's ministering before and ministering to the ark. Is that incredible that we do something that ministers to him? Oh, Pet says, if I can just be a doorkeeper, and in the process, he ends up being somebody that actually ministers unto God. Now that is a transformation that is so incredible. Lord, we are lovers of your presence. This is true. We love your presence. But as you shape, form, and develop us in such a way that somehow, some way, we become a people and someone becomes ministers that minister unto you. In Jesus' name, bless the seed.